Hello, this is Rubicon Ranger, and welcome back to Robocraft Mythbusting. Today, we're going to be talking about when it is you die in game. So, in the actual game itself, you die when you reach 20% of your total CPU. So, for a 2000 CPU bot, that would be 400 CPU. So, I have a uh, chunk of blocks here and some mech legs that's 400 CPU, and I'm going to be adding a bunch of components to that that are lower health per CPU to make sure that death isn't health based and we can vary the amount of health that's left on the 20% of our bot. So I'll be back in just a bit and I'll have some cubes added to this bot. Alright, I'm back and I've added the remaining 1600 CPU to the bot. So our previous health was 1,064,960 and our new health is 2,391,335. So 45% of our health roughly is on the bottom here with the mech legs and the heavy cubes and the remaining 55% of our health is up top with these modules. And the reason that is, is because the blocks on the bottom have more health per CPU than the blocks on the top. So we'll give this a test first, and then we'll go back and we'll check the same setup, but the other way around with the lower health per CPU components on the bottom and the higher health per CPU components on top. All right, so now I'm in test mode and I can shoot at the bot I just made. Um, we have our 1600 CPU up top here, and we have the 400 CPU on bottom and I've turned up the health by 500%, so relatively it shouldn't make a difference. The health split is still the same top to bottom percentage-wise, but it's just to help you show the uh, health being removed a little bit better. So, if I remove all these blocks, and by the time I get down to the end of the red section, we should see the bot die because it's reached 20% of its CPU. So when I remove this last block, the bot that I made should die. Let's see what happens. There you go. Alright, so now we're going to try the opposite setup. I'm going to have the lower health per CPU components on bottom, and I'm going to add high health per CPU components to the bot. So, uh, this is only 427,875 health, and I'm going to add a bunch of high health per CPU components to it. Alright, after adding the remaining 1600 CPU and parts, we're now at 4,898,875 health. Whereas with just the 400 CPU of parts right in the middle here, we were at 427,875. So only 8% of our health, or 8.7% of our health is right here, and the rest is all in these tank tracks and heavy cubes. But we should still die when all the components are, the colored components are removed. So let's test this again. Alright, so we're in test mode again, and I'm going to be testing the bot we just made. So the health is still turned up 500%, so it's going to take maybe a second to take these blocks off, but it'll let us be more precise. So there you go, there's the first layer, and then we'll take off the second layer. And by the time we get to the end of the red cubes, the bot should die again. So we're just going to remove all these, and you're going to see the health is getting lower and lower. And when I remove this last red cube, the bot should die. There we go. So now that we know how death works, how can we use this to our advantage? So one way you can use it to your advantage that I've seen talked about a lot, although the uh, combat effectiveness of it isn't as viable anymore, is making a little escape module or a core, which a lot of people still seem to be very interested in. Um, and I'll let you come to your own conclusions as to why it, or why not it might not be a good idea. But we know that if we want the end state of the bot to exist, it has to be more than 400 CPU for a 2000 CPU bot. So here we have two modules, which is just under 400 CPU. Ideally, you want to have a lot more than 400 CPU so that if part of this is removed, then you don't have to worry about your falling below the 400 CPU threshold. So I've used TX to increase the health density, or the uh, CPU density, and I've got some hovers for movement and a rudder for stabilization, and I'll add some blocks around this, and we'll see how it does. All right, so now we've got our little core encased in some shields and a bunch of TX, and we'll see how it does. All right, so here we are in test mode with the little core I just made. It's only attached to the shell in four different places, which is a very bad idea for health efficiency reasons. Um, but it does make the core work a little bit more reliably, so we're just going to kind of shoot around some of the connections here and take some of the material on the outside off, and we should see the center pop out. Now I do have to shoot off a certain amount of the shell, because otherwise the center when it comes out won't work properly. So it's actually only attached in one more place, 
and there you can see we've got two remaining hovers out of the four and the rudder still. So um, there's a practical example of how to use uh, the death mechanics to your advantage in game and make a little escape module. Um, there's reasons I don't recommend this. For instance, the center is isolated from the body, so it has no nowhere to dump damage when it gets hit. So if you get railed in the middle in those modules, you'll lose all your movement parts. So you're going to want some movement par parts still attached to the shell. So you can still move in case the center gets shot out. Alrighty, hopefully this was helpful. Catch you later.